All right, this is an approximately 70-year-old male who was presenting with headache for about two months. On this uh, axial flare sequence from an MR, you can see that there is mucoperiosteal thickening in the uh, lateral portion of the right sphenoid sinus. Uh, adjacent to this, you can see the cavernous internal carotid artery, the flow void here. The corresponding axial post-contrast sequence from the same MRI. Again, you can see this mucoperiosteal thickening. There's probably some fluid within it. And again, you can see the adjacent cavernous internal carotid artery here. Approximately two months later, this patient presented to the ER with headache, uh, uh, severe nosebleed, and also right eye vision loss. A CTA was performed, and here's the non-contrast portion of the CTA, and you can see complete opacification of this right sphenoid sinus. If you window it down, you can also see some areas of higher density in this area. And uh, going to the bone windows, you can see there's complete erosion of the uh, posterior lateral wall of the right sphenoid sinus. The subsequent CTA shows that there is a very large pseudoaneurysm arising from the cavernous portion of the right internal carotid artery extending into the uh, right sphenoid sinus, and those areas of higher density down here are probably some uh, bleeding from the pseudoaneurysm. Finally, here's the comparison from the MRI about two months prior, showing the sphenoid sinus disease and the patent uh, cavernous internal carotid artery, and here is the non-contrast, complete opacification, erosion of the bone, and in the CTA portion we saw that large pseudoaneurysm. So presumably this is a case of a uh, pseudoaneurysm related to sphenoid sinusitis. The patient uh, subsequently went coil embolization of this large pseudoaneurysm, as you can see here on the follow-up CT. Uh, a follow-up angiogram was performed and shows, you know, there's still some persistent uh, aneurysm sac within these coils, and the patient uh, subsequently underwent uh, further coil embolization. Now this is a separate companion case to the previous case. Uh, so this patient, also about 70 years old, they had a history of CLL and they presented with about uh, you know a recurrent headache as well. So again, separate case. Um, here is a uh, sinus CT in this case. Again, here's some uh, mucoperiosteal thickening here in the right sphenoid sinus. And in this case as well, you're seeing some bony dehiscence of the posterior lateral wall of this right sphenoid sinus. A subsequent CTA was also performed in this case. And here is the cavernous uh, right internal carotid artery. And where this is uh, adjacent to this area of uh, bony dehiscence, you see some soft tissue uh, in the area of this right internal carotid artery and a little bit of narrowing, maybe about 50% uh, stenosis. A follow-up MR was uh, performed approximately one month later, and on this uh, axial T2 sequence here, you can see the mucoperiosteal thickening in the sphenoid sinus. The area of uh, bony dehiscence is not well seen on the MR, but what you can notice is here's the flow void from the uh, contralateral internal carotid artery, and you do not see the flow void in the cavernous portion of the right internal carotid artery. Uh, diffusion weighted sequence shows restricted diffusion in the uh, internal capsule on the right, consistent with a stroke. Subsequent CTA uh, confirms that the right internal carotid artery is completely occluded. And again, here is this area of uh, thickening the sphenoid sinus bony dehiscence. So this is a uh, case of uh, sphenoid sinusitis related occlusion of the right internal carotid artery. The uh, follow-up on this case is the patient had aspergillus uh, meningitis, which presumably would uh, have been related to the uh, sinus infection extending into the um, intracranial space. Uh, both of these cases, so this case uh, was in January of 2016. The prior case of the pseudoaneurysm in the internal carotid artery was in January of 2017, so similar times of the years, whether this is uh, coincidental or not, uh, you know, not sure. And on the current case here that we showed, the aspergillus uh, meningitis, this was 
uh, confirmed with PCR analysis of the CSF.